Are you ready, Monarchs fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rayner and Coach Bobby Wilder. Friday night, under the lights, national TV. Old Dominion, a decided underdog, was a Hail Mary away from upsetting Western Kentucky. The four-point loss was exciting to watch, but devastating to the players who showed improvement, grit, and the will to win. Tomorrow, a long flight to Dallas to take on North Texas State. How did the week go? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader with a long list of questions, along with head coach Bobby Wilder. I know it was a tough loss, and mm -hmm. I know that you don't acknowledge so-called moral victories, but mm -hmm. a week later, mm -hmm. your thoughts on the Western Kentucky game? Excited and disappointed at the same time. You're absolutely right, Bruce. It was an exciting college football game. Those are the games you love to be a part of. Back and forth, four lead changes in the game, and it really came down to, Bruce, in that fourth quarter, the, the turnovers and then the explosive plays we allowed. You know, we allowed, uh, we, we had a turnover and a long pass, which we've got to get better at breaking those passes up as, as receivers. We worked on that this week. Sometimes you got to become a DB on an underthrown ball and break it up so we can get to second down. And then also the, the double moves. They beat us on a slant and go. That was the touchdown that put them up uh, 35 to 31 and, and very uncharacteristic, Bruce, for us in a close game. We've been number one in the nation the last five years in games decided by a touchdown or less. Very disappointing to lose a close game, but we turned the ball over the last three times we had it. We had that interception that led to a touchdown, then we had the fumble on fourth and one when we're going in to win, and then of course the Hail Mary uh, at the end. Uncharacteristic things that we have to improve on. Last week you told us that you had switched things around, that mm -hmm. you had decided to practice on Sundays. Did that continue this week and do you think it helps? I, it did continue, Bruce, and I think it helps. When you go through what we had at the start of the year where so many players were out with injuries, not only are they hurt, but they're missing all that practice time. And, and when you've got a freshman quarterback, you need that continuity. So we needed Stevie to be able to practice with Ray Lowry and the linemen that came back and Melvin Vaughn who came back. And that, that helped us, Bruce, and we were able to focus on the, the turnover part that we need to improve on and not allowing those explosive plays. Speaking of explosive plays, you needed one uh, still up by three. You take mm -hmm. a shot downfield. Isaiah yeah. uh, Harper runs the route well, it seemed. Mm -hmm. uh, young Stevie Williams can't get it to him. Mm -hmm. That play hurts, but mm -hmm. I guess you just can't shy away, even with a young quarterback, of taking a shot at those explosive plays. Yeah, what was happening, Bruce, as the game went on, because we rushed for 268 yards in this game, clearly our best rushing performance of the year. All of a sudden, we started to get the safeties down closer in the box. They were playing at seven or eight yards, and we had Harper lined up on the right side. He runs a post route. He's five yards behind the safety. The corner's trailing him on the outside, and Stevie located the ball where it needed to go. He just didn't throw it far enough, so now it's underthrown. The safety comes back and intercepts it, and that's one of those plays I was talking about where if we get an underthrown ball, hey, you got to go knock it down, but we have to stay aggressive, Bruce, in that regard when they're giving you something like that. Stevie's not missing that past two years from now? He's not missing it, hopefully, this week, Bruce. He just continues to improve at Marshall, 52% completion percentage this week, 68%. He's getting better every week. All right, let's talk about uh, what you were just talking mm. about, mm. your best offensive showing mm -hmm. of the year. What did you say? Yeah. 448 mm. total yards. Ray Lowry, 166 yards. Jeremy Cox, 57 yards. Is that what you were hoping to see all year in the running game? Yeah, and we're, we're getting healthy up front. Chad Hendricks came back three weeks ago. The last two weeks, Bruce, we've been able to start to run the ball successfully up front. I mentioned the 48 carries for 260 uh, eight yards, Lowry 27 for 166 and three touchdowns, Cox with 60. Stevie Williams, Bruce, quietly had nine carries for 45 yards in this game, three of them on third down where he tucked the ball and got the first down. So now he's starting to become aware as a 17-year-old of where the chains are and how to move it. He completed 17 of 25 passes. That's 68%. So all the things offensively we're improving on, he's getting better and his growth and development is helping our entire offense. Uh, defensively, you were that sack-happy team mm. that we saw at the uh, beginning of the season. Uh, the defensive backs had some tough plays, but yep. 
of course, when you're talking about Western Kentucky quarterback Mike White. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's a pretty good quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there should be a lot of optimism, I would think, going down to Texas Saturday. Yeah, there certainly is, Bruce. So O'Shane Zimenez, because we lost, didn't get recognized for probably his best game this year. He had a sack. He had two forced fumbles, one that we got early in the third quarter. We, we lead the league in sacks right now. We held him to 73 yards rushing, but you mentioned Mike White. He's an NFL quarterback. He's going to play in the NFL next year. He's a senior. He's a veteran. Um, and a couple of critical situations, Bruce, they got us on. They ran a double pass at us for a 40-yard completion, a slant and go for 50 yards. So there's 90 yards in passing on two explosive plays. We've got to have better eye discipline in the back end. That's something we work hard on this week in practice. What your opponents went through when you had Taylor Heineke. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about quarterbacks. I've always said it's all about the quarterbacks. You've had some great ones. Stephen mm -hmm. Williams, the youngest quarterback in the country. You talked about him briefly, but right. do you see growth every week? I do, Bruce. I see him just getting better and better. Think about this. His first two career starts on the road were two top 10 defenses in the nation at Virginia Tech and at Marshall, and we see him improving. Now, the schedule as, as we played it to this point, Bruce, two ACC teams and the top three teams in our division in the East. That's who he's gone against to this point, and he's making progress. He's getting better, still emphasizing taking care of the football, but you're starting to see him recognize down in distance, check it down when he needs to. He made a couple throws in this game, Bruce, from one hash to the other sideline on comeback routes that were big-time throws, and you're starting to see that development. So, yes, he gets better every week. All right, Old Dominion's all-time leading rusher, Ray Lowry, is back on the field, and when we return, he faces his latest challenge. Nathan Epstein in the One Minute Drill, and Coach Wilder answers your questions in the Coach's Corner. That's next on the Old Dominion Football Show. We're back with the Old Dominion Football Show, and I'm Nathan Epstein with the One Minute Drill, joined by, calls himself the elder statesman, Ray Lowry, the senior running back. Ray, what is the biggest difference between now and when you first came in as a freshman? Uh, definitely the role of responsibility. No, uh, coming in as a freshman, I didn't know much coming from high school, but now that I'm a senior, I have more of a leadership role in the team. What was the best part about the Bahamas Bowl last year? Definitely winning, holding up that trophy at the end, but other than that, you know, just hanging out with the guys. Uh, going to the water parks and, uh, you know, just going around the resort, just having fun. You know, it's definitely a time of a lifetime. The best prank you have ever pulled or one that's ever been pulled on you? A couple of times where I tried to sit down, someone pulled the chair from under me and I fell on my butt, but that's yeah. definitely. <laughs> the Bills, they made it to four straight Super Bowls, but they lost. Would you rather get to four straight and lose or not make any of them? Um, definitely get to four straight and lose because, you know, everyone wants to, everyone wants to play in the, um, in the Super Bowl. You know, that's the... It's the big dance. It's everyone's dream. You're a hard worker on this team, but what's the perfect day off? No check-in with the football team. You know, just be able to lay in my bed and sleep all day. What is your favorite thing about being a Monarch, and especially now in your senior year? Uh, you know, just hanging out with the guys on the team. You know, best friends for life. You know, the whole team. You know, we all have a great relationship. You know, hanging out with the team outside of football. That's definitely uh, one of the funnest. He's Ray Lowry. He's the senior running back. He's a playmaker, and he's done with the one-minute drill. Ray, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Bye, Monarch Nation. Hey, Coach, I'm guessing he's a great kid to have on your team for mm -hmm. four years. He sure is, Bruce. What a remarkable career. Clearly the best running back in our brief history. One of the best running backs all time in Conference USA. 27 for 166, three touchdowns last week, and he's clearly an NFL prospect. Well... I'll tell you what, we've got some questions from you, the fans, the Coach's Corner, when we come back. Time now for the Coach's Corner. Remember, send me your questions to bruce.rader at wavy.com. Uh, first question, Coach, Arnold from Virginia Beach wants to know, information on the stadium rebuild is starting to surface. What impact does this project have on recruiting moving mm. forward. Oh, it's already had a huge impact, Bruce, on recruiting because we've had some of the design photos that we've been able to share with recruits. The fact that right when we end the season last year, Bruce, it starts and it's going to be done in nine months. So we'll be able to see, touch, feel the progress that will happen with the stadium. This has been a big help to us thus far with recruiting. Only going to help more when it gets here. 
Hard to believe, Coach. Game number eight. Wow. Saturday, 6.30 in Denton, Texas, Old Dominion against North Texas. Coach, tell us about the Mean Green this year. They are undefeated at home, Bruce. 3-0, much improved team. 4-3 and overall, 3-1 and in Conference USA, so they lead the West. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Mason Fine. Outstanding running game. It's going to be a major challenge, and I'm told it's going to be cold in Texas Saturday night, so we may have the cold weather gear. Is that good when you have a good running game? It definitely is. That's what you want to feature in these type of games, and that's something we're going to need to have Saturday night. And unlike that long bus trip to Virginia Tech, this is a, <laughs> not a bad trip. No, three-hour flight going out. Hopefully prevailing winds getting home. We'll get home early Sunday morning, but it's nice when you can fly to these games. Well, hopefully you'll fly home with a win. Absolutely. Have a good trip, Coach. And Thank you, Bruce. Coming up here on Fox 43 tonight, a special edition of the Washington Huddle because of programming with the World Series. And join us every Thursday night at 1045 with Coach Bobby Wilder on the Old Dominion Football Show. Have a great weekend, everybody.